Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome to God the News Network, where the saints are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By listening to God News Network and, of course, the Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for joining us today as we get started on this wonderful 20th of March 2016 with the world going crazy and everything in it. It looks like the debate has taken over all the TV channels and nobody can watch anything but the debate as controlled by big media. It's just the way it is. They want to take control. They want to run your life. They want to tell you what you can listen to and you have no choice. And what a fight it's becoming because times are heating up and we are getting closer and closer every day to the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I can't wait wait to get my new body. And with me, I have my new friend who is not only my friend, but an actual partner in this wonderful ministry that we are doing, taking it across the planet. And that is my good friend, Albert Delgado from South Carolina. How are you, brother? I'm doing good again, Rick. Another beautiful day again. Another day that I rode a little bit of bike out there and boy, was it nice. Uh, it was nice and cool, and the sun wasn't strong at all. In fact, we had an overcast, which was great because uh, I hate riding the motorcycle with bright sunlight because uh, it, it bothers me. Uh, I like I like better overcast skies, Rick. <laughs> and I was just listening, Rick, what you were saying, and it's very interesting. You know, uh, people are always talking about, oh, I'm them. Democrat, oh, I'm Republican, but there's one thing in common that both of them are saying, and they're saying it loud and clear, is that you can't trust any of the parties. For years, they've been promising things, and they haven't been able to catch up with those promises, or even, I think, even do any of those promises, and that is, in a way, really good, because we have somebody who does keep his promise, and this world reminds us that we cannot trust anything in this world. We could only trust him. He is the only one who could keep promises. And, uh, and we could see that the governments, you know, uh, Jesus Christ uh, told the Hebrews that, that he was going to be their government. And the Hebrews uh, basically said, no, we want an earthly government. We want a king. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, uh, and so that's what we have. We have an imperfection. Uh, imperfection trying to guide us. And so we cannot, when you have imperfection guiding you, you cannot expect perfection. So uh, when you do have perfection, we call it something else. We call it a miracle. (laughs) You know, after reading the Bible day in, day out, like we do, and we study the Word of God, then we see these uh, supposedly our future leaders up on stage doing what they do. It makes you think, can we go back to that decision and choose Jesus instead? Boy, that would have been something else, Rick, (laughs) something else. But I guess we learned our lesson, and and, uh, if that wouldn't have happened, uh, we wouldn't have been here as Christians scratching our heads and saying, boy, I wish I would have been back at that time, you you know? That's Uh, right, that's right. But uh, there's only one perfect ruler, and that's Christ. Yes, you know? he's coming and, soon, man. Yeah, and uh, that, and we cannot expect perfection, unfortunately, from from government because it's run by people. It's run by people. That's right. And we have a we have a prince in this in the air here that, uh, unfortunately, too many people, uh, you know, uh, listen to him, and it even gets worse. Well, today we're going to kind of dive into that exactly, and we're going to talk about one of the events that we expect to see in our lifetime coming up soon, and that is the appearance of the two witnesses and what that's all about and and where it's going. And 
before I start, let's just say that, you know, this one here is a little bit ambiguous as we dive into this and we start going into the Word of God. People have their different theories on who it is. And, and even before the show, Albert and I were kind of discussing back and forth a little bit on different ideas that may exist out there. And what we're going to do is present to you what we see in the Bible and kind of kind of throw it out for discussion for people. And they are more than welcome to uh, uh, dive in. And if you got any kind of uh, information you want to send over, please send it to Rick at me.com, Rick at me.com, or you can send it to Albert at a delgado one two six at gmail dot com. That's a d e l g a d o one two six at gmail dot com. Hopefully, Albert, you didn't have a problem with me giving that out. <laughs> no, that's perfectly. Uh, I will be more than happy to uh, meet our, our brothers and sisters out there, and uh, it's great. Well, it will be such a be such a pleasure, and it will be so awesome because. Uh, you know, we, we get uh, uh, some, uh, some few emails and we get some, uh, some likes and stuff like that. But, boy, it will be awesome to actually uh, uh, have a conversation with uh, brothers and sisters out there. Uh, this is what it's all about, uh, Rick. This is what it's all about, is, uh, is having a relationship with your brothers and sisters and, and talking about things. And, and, and uh, you know, everybody, everybody's gifted. Everybody in the body of Christ is gifted, and uh, and we have been taught and shown secrets that need to be shared. You know, mm-hmm. so that is a great thing, Rick. It's a great thing, boy. I will encourage that. So it will be such a good thing to hear from people. And you know, Rick, we have people all over the world. Uh, you know, we have people in England and Africa. Yeah, I mean, in I the United States, uh, a lot of people all over in the United States, uh, Russia, I mean, it, in <laughs> Russia. I mean, it oh, is. Yeah. It will be such a such a a, a delight, you know, uh, hearing from these people and 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 hearing what they have to say. Uh, don't be shy. Don't be shy because everybody has gifts here. Well, and also, I want to before we dive in. Um, Offer up an apology for last week. We didn't have our show, and the reason was is we had a death of a very, very, very close friend of mine and my wife's, and then also my wife had surgery simultaneously, matter of fact, uh, the, the same day. So it was really just a um, unbelievable week last week, but uh, God gets us through everything with with total peace and understanding. And you know, that's the one thing I did know going through this is how I had such a peace regardless of those kinds of things, you know, because most people just, you know, probably those who don't have Christ can't experience that kind of peace through those kind of traumatic situations. And when you have Christ, it just gives you a peace that goes beyond all understanding because I know where they're at. I know right now they're in heaven with their Lord and wow. Okay. Beat that. (laughs) That's the ultimate vacation, right? Yeah, you can. You know, he has, he has said himself that what he has in store for us, it is so great. It is so out of this world that we really don't have even an imagination as to the greatness of the things he has for us. And, uh, and you know, if we know about his love towards us, we won't be surprised. When we wake up in the other end, we're, it's just going to be incredible. You know what? Rick, you know, people don't realize that the things that Christ says sometimes, you know, when he says that he's our servant and that he has made everything for us to enjoy, I mean, it is, you know, it's unimaginable. There's very, I don't think there's one king that has said that he's the servant of the people and really, really mean that, you know, just like our government, uh, you, we have the, the servants that work in the government, you know, (laughs) and believe me, some of them is just by name, (laughs) 
because they're not there to serve you. They're really there to serve themselves. That's so right. there's very few people out there that actually can say that they're your servants, <laughs> whether <laughs> in the governments or kings. <laughs> and, and Jesus is our servant, believe it or not. And not just a servant or brothers. Yeah. There's many things that Jesus is, that the Bible calls Jesus. But, uh, but believe me, he's there for us. He is there for us. Not 99% or 95%, but 100%. And people but think anyways, they, people think that that we are serving him. You know, we that's not possible. He is serving us and serving through us. He's doing the serving, right. not us. When we think we're doing the serving, we're giving ourselves a greater importance. And it's really not us doing the serving. So if you've been a longtime fan of this show here since we started a year ago, we want to thank you because we know that it's not us doing the serving. We're just here spreading this great news. And with that, I want to dive into this thing and get rolling on the two witnesses. Yeah. We're in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. If you, We want to start there so it sets it up and then continue down through it. Read the prophecy as is. So when we do that, we want you to just close your eyes and listen or open your Bible to Revelation 11, uh, verse 1, and follow along with this. We're in the King James Version. I tell you what, I'm going to back this out into the new King James Version just so it's a little easier to understand um, for our listeners. <clears throat> Here we are, Revelation 11, 1. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. That's John. John was given a reed. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. So he's not just measuring the geographical parts. He rise and measuring the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. He's measuring them as well in context. Kind of interesting. But leave out the court, which is outside the temple. And do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. So he's already setting up where the temple is. It's right here in the holy city, which is Jerusalem. And they're going to do it for 42 months, which translates into three and a half years. Verse 3, and I will give power to my two witnesses. And they, the two witnesses, will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Do you realize that's three and a half years? They will prophesy for three and a half years? Why in the world do we have two witnesses brought on the scene and they're going to prophesy for three and a half years? years. What I did was I did a look up on the word two witnesses. And when we look up the word two witnesses in the Bible, the first place that it's mentioned is in the book of Deuteronomy. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. This is a very interesting statement because when the two witnesses come on to the scene, what is their purpose? To put to death. They are going to judge, man. They're here. They're, mm -hmm. they're causing some chaos. And we're going to see how much chaos they can cause and how much power they're given here as we continue reading in this. But these are the it, it, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before God of the earth. Now, this is interesting because this exact thing was pulled from a prophet. And it was pulled from a prophet out of the Old Testament in Zechariah chapter 4. And it is... We'll go up here to four one and start reading there. And the angel talked with me, came again and waked me up 
as a man that is waking out of his sleep. So he was kind of jarred awake, dude. I mean, so he's kind of in a daze here. He's really out of it. But this angel comes and says, okay, time to wake up. And said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps there on. Isn't it funny? Funny, it's a candlestick, but look, it's called his seven lamps there on. Not hmm. its seven lamps there on. It's his seven lamps there on. And seven pipes to the seven lamps, like they're being fed. The seven hmm. lamps, the seven churches are being fed with pipes. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? What a picture. Which are upon. And that, Go ahead. Yeah, uh, that that's almost like a resemblance of the uh, of the uh, brides that that some of them forgot their uh, uh, their uh, oil their oil for the yeah. lamps. Right. Yeah. yeah. Kind of interesting, which are upon the top there, and two olive trees by it. So by this candlestick, there's two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel and talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. So this is where he gets the saying about the olive trees, right here in 4.3. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right, one upon the left side. So let's go back to Revelation 11. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants har to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. So he's going to be killed with fire from their mouths if they want to harm the two witnesses. Now that's power. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have the power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. That's incredible. That takes you back to when Moses led them out of Egypt. So this is all symbolism revolving around, I'm going to free people, and you're going to let my people free, prince of the air, king of Egypt. It's all a big resemblance of the same spiritual event, but differently this time, which makes sense why as we read on, it says Egypt. Let's dive in. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. So this is the beast. This is Satan coming up saying uh, out of the bottomless pit, and he's going to overcome them, and he is going to kill them. And their bodies will lie in the streets of that, of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. This is a key here. Why Egypt? Think about Moses. He was kind of a Christ coming to set his people free, right? And where was it? It was in Egypt. And Sodom, he pulled his people out of before he destroyed it. 
Mm-hmm. He pulled his people out before he destroyed Sodom. So let's look that up in the Bible into the Greek text and see what that is. If we look at Sodom in that verse, it's actually from the word uh, um, uh, Sodoma. And we go down here, it means a metaphor, Jerusalem. There it is, metaphor of Jerusalem, a city destroyed by the Lord raining fire and brimstone on it. And he said he's not going to destroy anything by water again. This time it's going to be by by fire yeah and you know that that uh that right there rick uh is very interesting uh because we're gonna let's look at sodom Mm -hmm. and uh you know when he went to uh pick up his brothers and all that that god told him that he was gonna destroy the city Mm -hmm. and uh and and look at the bargains you know he says well if there's uh if there's I forgot how much it was. If there's 30 people, will you destroy the city? You know, and uh, and I'm paraphrasing. And, and God said, no, no. And he goes, well, and he brings that other one. Well, what about if there's 10 people, you know? Well, it turned out at the end of Sodom, there was only <laughs> his brother and his family that were the only ones that were safe in that city. Yeah. So, and, uh, and, and if we go back to uh, the great flood with Noah, yeah, uh, you know yes. uh, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Yeah, the Bible says it. that means that he taught the good news of Jesus Christ <laughs> before. <It> was, <laughs> yeah, before uh, all this, and 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 he was there preaching for a long time during the building of the ark. Years and years during the building of the ark, he was preaching and preaching and preaching. How many people got in that ark? I mean, he was preaching to all those people, truth. I know, and no one would accept it. Nobody, nobody would accept it. And here we have two witnesses preaching for how long? For three years? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. And yet... Those two witnesses have to do all kinds of deals, just like what happened in the flood and, and the burning. They had, a, they had to use their powers. And at the end, they got, they got killed. Nobody listened to them. No one. Yeah. It just makes you think, what was the religion or what was the thinking of the people at that time and 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 Noah's time and and uh, when Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed uh and and this future time when these two witnesses are going to be are going to be there uh, uh uh preaching they're probably going to be preaching the gospel nobody accepted it the gospel message is such alien to this world that people will not accept it. Bibles have been changed because of that. Teachings have been changed because of that. Religions have been formed because of that. No one, just like just like Christ says, who will accept this message? Hmm. Who will accept this message? This message that we're bringing in, who will accept it? Those who listen to God News Network will accept it. Those who listen to Saints Without Walls, they accept it. You know, it is three and a half years. Just did a Google translation just so everybody can see that. It's 3.45, which rounded up as three and a half years. So you got three and a half years that they're going to be preaching, and they're dressed in sackcloth for three and a half years, but people will reject it. Like you said, they're not going to accept the the message of these two witnesses. What's funny is they're going to have supernatural powers to be able to devour those with fire who try to come against them. Now, if you think people are coming against Trump, wait till these guys are on the scene. They are going to be trying to come against him in every way, shape, or form. And what's funny is 
evil is restrained during those three and a half years not to be able to do anything. So it's just going to be incredible news, Mm -hmm. just incredible. And what's really interesting that was just recently, um, week of March or 15th here, two witnesses that showed up in Israel to reset the calendar month. Did you see that? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. First, first time in 2000 years that there's been two witnesses to perform that duty. That's kind of very interesting. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this today is because these two witnesses, they have a mission and it is very important mission, but I wanted you to see um, under two witnesses, the very first place it's mentioned Usually, the place of first mention, it's kind of a theological thing when you're doing training. But at the mouth of two witnesses, or three, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. One witness, uh, we're now in Deuteronomy 19, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three, shall the matter be established. So now God is establishing yes. this matter. Go ahead. And and let's let's look at that even a little bit closer as to the new covenant. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, disciples were sent out in two. Exactly. Two witnesses. That's right. And not just that they were sent out in two witnesses. Jesus Christ told them that whatever they agreed on was that was established here on earth, so should it be established in heaven. So the disciples had that. That not, and and uh, what is it that the disciples? What was it that the disciples? The power that the disciples had a decision. Listen to the power of the disciples. They were sent out with the gospel. The power was in the gospel. And this is the power that they had. If two witnesses came to your doorstep and knocked on your doorstep and they told you about the gospel and you rejected the gospel, they have the right to tell you that forget it, forget about the second door of heaven because you had no right towards it. That's the power that they had. Now, we, as we know, the Catholic Church and Religion has twisted that. But the power of the disciples was that. Two witnesses going, preaching the gospel, which is the power of salvation. Yes. Going and knocking on people's doors and in villages and telling them the good news. And in some of those villages, rejection, complete rejection. And what did God say? Brother, just wipe the dust out of your feet and your sandals and continue on. And he'll deal with even, <laughs> even, even, even Jesus Christ said this himself. He says he went to a village. Remember his own village. They rejected him. What did Jesus Christ say? You know, when the day comes of judgment, you're going to be worse off than Sodom and Gomorrah. Boy, Rick, that is, that is something else. You imagine the Lord himself saying this. Because of rejection of the gospel, rejection of Christ. Right. And, and these two witnesses are going to be rejected because of Christ, because of the good news. Well, Matthew 18, 18, 18 and 18, 19, you, you nailed it. This is very important. He says, Verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And he repeats it now in 19. Again, I say unto you that if you, that if two of you, two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. I like the word touching because I think that's important that he uses that word there. The two of you agree on earth as touching anything. So imagine 
Albert, you and I touching the screens right now and praying someone is miraculously healed who is listening to this show. Put your hand on the screen. And do you agree? I've got yes, my Lord. on the screen right here. You agree? Yes, Lord. That someone yes, is going to be miraculously healed who is listening to this. We bind that in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Amen. Lord. Yes. You have given us the power, Lord, and we are your sons, Lord. Yes. And we both agreed in what the power that you have given us, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's done. It's absolutely, we have ownership of that. That's the kind of power he gave them. And he's giving these two witnesses this power. Let's get back into to, uh, uh, where, we, where we were here in Revelation. Um, where am I? Okay. So we looked at Sodom, and that's what it is, right? But there's also another word in there, not just Sodom. So as we read this, it says, And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is another word that's used a lot in the Bible in prophecy. So whenever it deals with the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, we now know that that's Jerusalem and Egypt. Why did he use the word Egypt? Like you said earlier, we're back into, uh, you'll see that this is a metaphor for Jerusalem, the Jews persecuting Christ and his followers. And so to be likened to the Egyptians treating the Jews when Moses was trying to get them free. So, and this word here is pronounced Strong's G125, Aegyptos. 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 That's the word used for Egypt. Kind of interesting. Now, now, Rick, you know by reading the Bible that the whole generation of Jews that were freed from Egypt all died in the desert because of their unbelief. Yes. And I wonder when these two witnesses come in, what will be the belief of that generation? It was anybody who was over 21 died. Everybody over 21. It actually used that number, 21. So this next one, it's amazing how they're going to be able to see the power of God manifesting itself with these two witnesses and still be able to reject Jesus Christ. Of course, people rejected Jesus knowing he had power. When he was here, it was God on earth, and they still rejected it. So it's not that not going to be that un, un, uh, you know, unbelievable. So as we continue here, and their body is lying in the streets, and it'll be lying in the streets of that city, which is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. That's another great uh, answer that you know that Sodom and Egypt, that's what it means because it ends it where also our Lord was crucified. So we know he was crucified in Jerusalem. Then those from the peoples, the tribes, the tongues, and the nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days. So they're going to watch this event, and they're going to watch them die, and they're going to lay in the street for three and a half days in a representation of the three and a half years that they preached. And everybody's going to be able to see it. What's really interesting is this could this prophecy could never occur beyond any time in history except for now, because now we have the Internet. We have the ability for everybody from those peoples, tribes, tongues, nations. Everybody's going to see it. Well, how in the world could everybody watch dead bodies lay in the street for three and a half days prior to today's technology? You couldn't. Hmm. So that's why we know we are in those days. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them. Now think about that. We're going to know these are the witnesses, and those who dwell on the earth are going to rejoice over them. Make merry. These guys are going to party over this and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. <laughs> you know, let me, let me uh, uh, get a couple of uh, uh, places in the Bible where, you know, where it's amazing. And Mark 
9.19, it says, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? In Hebrews 12, 20, uh, Hebrews 12, 1, it says, The sin that does so easily beset us, it all has to do with the faith that we have. Yeah. Those people with faithless. That's right. Just like uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, just like the great flood, faithless people. Uh, and Matthew, it, 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 you know, it talks about, uh, you know, you, you see those, those people lying and knowing that those people come from God. And yet they lie in the street and you guys are parting. You know, in Matthew, it, it talks about, you know, I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me nothing to drink. Uh, you know, these are, this are the same type of people. The yeah. same type of people against God's people. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, in Matthew 24, it says uh, that there's going to be an increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold. Wax you know, cold. just like in those days. Those people that were there standing in, in front of three people that were dead and they're partying and all, all that. That is a cold love, a cold love. Hmm. Well, Amazing. I got to tell you, man, for people to be partying and ha making merry over their dead bodies, it's absolutely bizarre, but that's what's going to happen. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet. And then a great fear fell on those who saw them. Now you've been making merry, you've been partying in, and now you're watching the breath of life go into the, it's going to be like the reality show of all time. Imagine that for three and a half years, it's almost going to be like a reality show. People will be watching it. Oh, now they're going to cause this plague to occur. They're going to cause this plague to occur. Oh no, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh. Now they're, oh my, did you see that? They breathed fire out of their mouth and killed those people who tried to get them to be quiet. And now all of a sudden they're dead after this three and a half year reality show. Look what's happening with the media, with the stinking candidates over Trump and Cruz and all this crazy stuff, and they can't shut up. 24-7, you're hearing about this. Imagine two guys in sackcloth preaching in Jerusalem, blowing fire out of their mouth at people who oppose them. It's going to be the reality show of all time with the media. That's why they're going to be making merry because they're being, they're suffering and they don't think it's right. Look at the mindset of people who are showing up at some of these rallies causing these, these, uh, you know, violence and stuff like that. This is going to be on steroids compared to what's going on right now. So if you can picture it in your mind, that's why they made Mary, because it's all done, blah, 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 blah. And these, these worldly thinking individuals that are causing all the violence today are going to be the same mindset. It's going to be going, hey, party, dude, they're, they're done, they're done, they're done, they're done, not realizing what the prophecies say. And then God's going to breathe life into them. They're going to stand up. <laughs> and now fear is going to be upon the entire earth. But you know what's really ironic? They still refuse to accept Jesus amongst yep. all of that. Incredible. You know, it's to, to me, this right here is like in the other uh, aspects, like we talked about the great flood and, and some of them, Amora. these people are, are the door, door, doors, man, saying the ship is leaving. <laughs> the ship is leaving. Get on board because the ship is leaving. That's what they are. That's what they are. I, I could just imagine That's right. Noah saying, guys, come on. This is a big boat. You guys fit in this boat. Come, it's going to leave. It's going to leave. The door is going to shut. Yeah. You know, uh, just like in, some, in, in, in Gomorrah, you know, uh, I could just imagine him going through the streets and saying, guys, this city is not going to be 
this is going to disappear as you know it. Yeah. Follow me. Let's get on board here. Let's go. Follow me. And he loves him enough that he's shouting, follow me for three and a half years. Three and a half, not days, not weeks, not months, but years. That's how much God loves us. Giving every little square inch of person, trying to, giving them every benefit of the doubt. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Watch this power. They die with fire. Watch this power. I'm going to put plagues on the earth because you people aren't listening. And they still refuse. I can't even imagine that. And then after the three and a half days and God breathed life into them. Here we are in Revelation 11, 11. And they stood on their feet and a great fear fell upon those who saw them. Here we go into 12. And then they heard this loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And then they ascended to heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw them. Now, this is real interesting. God's putting it on my heart to check out something here on this cloud thing. Let's look at which cloud this means. Used of the cloud which led the Israelites in the wilderness. It's the same cloud that led them in the wilderness. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Nephile. That's Nephile, the cloud. Nephile. You know, God is really, really, really trying to save these people. I mean, he's really trying to say, hey, come on, let's go. Like you said, like Noah and, and uh, coming out of the Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, the whole nine yards, lot. So, and they heard a loud voice saying, come up here. And they sent into uh, heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw them. Now, Revelation 13, in the same hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. So a tenth of Jerusalem fell in this earthquake. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest of them were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. It looks like right there, all the rest of Jerusalem at this point, right there, gave glory to God. Right then, it's like a big change. Wham! Okay, we get it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming. <clears throat> the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So when these guys are breathed life into and they're ascending, the decision and the gavel has fell. It's done. It's done. The it's two witnesses. Done. The two witnesses are so important. You have to, if you forget, if you're listening to this and you are of any other faith, you're any other religion, Please keep this in mind. This is a prophecy that is about to occur. And when this prophecy occurs, you better pay attention to what you just heard because you're on a clock. As soon as these witnesses come, we are on a clock. The clock is ticking. You have three, you have 1,260 days. Exactly. <laughs> Wow, that's an amazing thing. And then the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces, worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry. Oh, does that sound familiar with what's going on right now in politics? Hillary says she's getting calls from world leaders asking them to do everything they can to stop Trump. World leaders are angry. <laughs> and you, oh, 
the people are angry everywhere. Anger is rising like crazy. The nations were angry. And your wrath has come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. Wait a minute. How can you judge the dead? Mm. They're dead in Christ. They don't know Christ. And you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the The saints. saints. Uh That's why Rick on the radio is St. Rick. That's why I use that, because it is my identity, and I own it. If you don't like it, I'm really sorry, but that's just the way that it is. It says I'm a saint. I believe I'm a saint. And the good news is, is you're a saint, too. You are a saint as well. And those who fear your name, small and great, and you should destroy those who destroy you the earth. How are they destroying the earth? Remember the fire? Up until this point, there's going to be all kinds of stuff happening all over the earth and bombs and and meteorites and mountains falling and all this kind of stuff is, is going on. Well, that's because of the nuclear bombs, I believe. I believe a lot of the nuclear bombs are going to start going off. We're going to start having some things. I feel it in my spirit right now. Sometime within the next 24 months, we're going to face, you're hearing it here first on, on uh, God News Network, sometime in the next 24 months, something big is going to occur on earth that is going to change our country and the world as we know it. There's going to be some major changes coming our way. I just feel it in my spirit. Then the- I think, Rick, I think people actually out there know that there's something going on, but they just can't pinpoint it, Rick. I think that everybody in their back of their minds are seeing that things are not as usual as as they always were. That there's things going on that uh, that they can't you they feel it, but they cannot express it or understand what it is. I know it, it, it's in the spirit, and a lot of people are feeling it. You know, a lot of people are feeling it, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it's because we're in tune with the spirit. You know, we are in tunes with the spirit. This is 10 months ago. I, I just kind of want to, I'm not going to have the volume up or anything, but I want you to see what's happening within our country right now. And this is stuff going on right now that are being built up. What's funny is, um, this is something that's, uh, you just got to see it. Just check this out. This is an amazing thing here. This is Dabu 7. Check this out. Right here, what you're seeing is military trucks. I don't know if you can see that. You see that, Albert? Yeah, yeah. I see it perfect, Rick. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. That's going on in our country. There's trains all over our country right now bringing in military trucks, tanks, weapons, um, all kinds of stuff. Look at this. They're just coming in by the train loads all over the country. You know what's amazing about this, Rick, is that the Bible says that when you hear peace, safety, <laughs> and safety, be careful because <laughs> it's not going to be peace and safety. <laughs> it's not going to be peace and safety. Now, this is in California. Uh, there's another one here. Um, nine months ago, this was in Colorado. Check this out. We're back to uh, this one's in Colorado. Look at these. It's amazing. And if you're listening to this on radio, you can't see it. But check this out. There's all kinds of military equipment and tanks and Look at those tanks. Look at those tanks. There's tons of them. And it's all on a train. And, and there's trains all over the country. That was in Colorado. Um, here's some in New Mexico heading east. Check this out. This is an amazing thing to just see all of these military vehicles. This was oh. on March 9th. Yeah. Rick, the, all those things are for peace. You know, they're going to shoot bubble gum out of their cannons and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, right. Look at that. He's driving down the road filming these tanks and trucks. I mean, you can't even see the end of the train, and you're on a desert. You can't see the end of the train with all these vehicles. That's how many are being trans 
self-reported. And this is not just in one state. It's happening all over the country. <laughs> it's happening all Look at this. This is huge. Look at this. There are fuel tanks. You got these uh, earth moving equipment. Those are carrying bodies. You can tell that's what they're made for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just incredible. Oh yeah. It's just, it's just, we, you better get your life right with Christ because I'm telling you right now, this is, this is heating up quickly. This is heating up quickly. Here's union Pacific. Uh, here's seven months ago in Oregon. This is in Oregon, right here. August 2015. This is an amazing thing. He's driving down the road, sees trains, and then he starts filming and finds all these military equipment pieces in Oregon. Military training. And look, there's weapons and and uh, bullets inside those <laughs> weapons and bullets it's all military stuff it's just crazy so we know we're getting close there's some more equipment military there's jeeps and uh things of that nature look at that it's unbelievable. You've got them all over the place. New Mexico, you've got them in Colorado, you got them in Oregon, you got them coming across from Canada, um, uh, San Antonio, Texas. There's a bunch of them. Lake City, Utah. There's a bunch of them. Um, Snyder, Texas. You know, it's just incredible and medical medical vehicles that are set up for them we are living in the end of days dude we are living in the end of days and it's it's just crazy so that's why god news network is here we want you to know that there is good news the good news is by accepting jesus christ as your lord and savior you don't have to deal with any of it in other words it's like I don't know if any of you ever been to the dentist or you had to go get a shot. You know, you work yourself up, here comes the shot, and then it was a prick and it hurt for just a second, but then it's over. It's it's the same. It's the same. You know, it's it's just exactly how it's gonna be, you know. Um, anyway, I'm excited that that Jesus Christ provided a way for us to have salvation regardless of the situation. And we don't have to be worried about eternity. We are safe. We are safe. And life's about to change for a lot of people pretty quick. Mm. Oh, wow. What another show. What a great show. Who are the two witnesses? Nobody knows. But there's many different theories out there. I mean, I've heard what you, you say, John, possibly one of them. Yeah, that's what one of my, you know, what I think, but sure. it could be wrong. Yeah, we don't know. And we hear Enoch, we hear Elijah, and we hear Moses. You know, my theory is it could be Elijah and Moses just because on the Mount of Transfiguration, those were the two that stood with Christ as he was transfigured. One represents the prophets, one represents the um, law. And Jesus, of course, represents the new covenant. And then, if you, of course, you have. Peter, uh, John, and uh, who else was with him? Was it James? Yeah. There's this been, this been so many. Uh, I, I have read all kinds of, uh, uh, of different people saying different uh, uh, disciples and prophets. And, uh, you know, all I could tell you is that there, there is going to be two, two witnesses out there. And it might be in our <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> That's right, brother. There is going to be two witnesses. And I want to let you know, if you're listening to God News Network and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, here's how you do it. Repeat after me. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept your death. I accept your burial. And I accept your resurrection. Guide me, lead me, and show me the way. I am now yours. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, amen.
Hallelujah. If you said that prayer right now, you are a saint. You have now become a saint. Worry not about what all the sins you did because I got good news for you. Go to saintswithoutwalls.com and click on archive services and listen to today's message and you will understand what I'm saying. Tell everybody, join God News Network, become part of the saints are rising. Though evil is rising, the saints are rising. We give God all honor and all glory. And Albert, I want to thank you for being a partner, one of the two witnesses at God News Network and Saints Without Walls, because as we move forward, we continue spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, and have a blessed day, brother. <laughs>